been through uh, some tough times over the past couple of years. I'll tell you about it. He's a regular at the Funny Bone. He's also a regular at the House of Blues. He's from New Orleans. Please put your hands together. Make a lot of noise for T. Ray. Let's have T. Ray. Thank you. Give it up to MC Harvey. Chief seats, how you doing? Yeah, they fuck you, you don't care. I gotta look, man, because I got a stalker now, so I gotta check everywhere I go. Every city I go, I got this stalker, right? No matter what city I'm in, she calls me. Sally Mae. Y'all know Sally Mae, the fucking student loan bitch? No, she will call you everywhere you go. That's a relentless bitch, Sally Mae. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, if Osama bin Laden had a uh, student loan, he'd be like in a cave, like, how the fuck did you find me in a cave? Damn! <laughs> She called me, I got fed up with this shit. I said, you know, um, I'm not even using the college degree. You can come pick it up. I don't need the fucker in the mailbox. You know? <laughs> Scare me. You drank too much last night. Anybody else? My ass. You know what happens then? You wake up uh, when I went to IHOP. IHOP's got a freaky menu, man. You can get, like, um, funnel cakes for breakfast, right? You get funnel cakes for breakfast, then for lunch you can get corn dogs and lemonade, and then my waiter didn't have any teeth, and if they put in a ring toss game, I'd have thought I was at the fucking Gibson County Fair. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Man, then I went to McDonald's. I hate McDonald's. Simple order to drive through, right? A chicken nugget value meal. With a coat, I get to the drive-in, and, and the girl's like, Do you want catch up with that? Yeah. Then I get the question, How many? Well, I don't fucking know. How many do you think? I mean, <laughs> I mean they made a fucking billion dollars off a fake rib sandwich, right? Am I lying? The mac, it looks like a little baby back rib put on a... It's it got grill marks on it. Yeah, they don't have a fucking grill. that they can put in the fucking drive through right? No. You got me doing a fucking math problem at the fucking window. Knowing I'm from Louisiana, like, oh shit, let's see a half ounce of ketchup in a pack. What the average length of a fry? I got, I got it, 75, put them in the fucking bag, 75. I need 75 ketchups. You look at it in super size, that's you know they tell me that? That's too many ketchups. <laughs> I was like, there's not a post ketchup limit in the drive-thru. Put them in the bag. Yeah. I didn't go to McDonald's much when I was a kid, man. I grew up poor. A lot of you might have. Yeah, poor people on top, yeah. Let's go ahead. <laughs> You don't realize you're cool when you're a kid, right? As long as you have like a roof over your head and three meals a day and a stick to beat your brother with and shit like that. You don't know you're cool. But one day I was in New Orleans eating lunch like later on in life. And uh, the lunch in New Orleans on Monday is red beans and rice. I don't know if you guys know that. But I thought to myself, damn, red beans and rice. We ate that every Monday growing up. Now if you eat red beans on Monday, white beans on Tuesday, lima beans on Wednesday, green, your ass was poor, people. Because you know what beans are? They're fucking cheap. That's what beans are, right? It's protein without meat. Put it in. Every New Year's we had the same shit. We had black eyed peas and cabbage. You have that here? Cabbage and black eyed peas. And I asked my mom, like, Mom, we eat this every year. Why? And she said, Because, honey, it's a tradition. Black eyed peas, which is just another fucking bean. <laughs> Grill. 
Yes, indeed. My grandparents are really poor. My grandmother used to eat calf brains and Limburger cheese. Yeah, no, not together, because that'd be fucking gross. But, <laughs> separately, I, I'd go in there, Limburger cheese, I don't know if you ever smelled it. I don't think they make it anymore. There's probably some kind of ban on it. But I'd go in there like, damn, mama, how can you eat this? It smells so bad. And she'd say, it's good once you get it past your nose. <laughs> don't laugh, because my brother fell for that once. <laughs> He's gay now. <laughs> he can cook his ass off, too. <laughs> we let him cook Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, really, he cooked his dog. You might have heard of it. It's where you take a turkey, and you stuff it with a duck, and you stuff it with a hen, and then you uh, stuff it with a gerbil. It's a gay duck. <laughs> Basically, with a KY jelly, it's a... Sean was talking about you, you have to cook it. You just rub it down and let it sit overnight. You have to cook itself. It slides down your throat. It's good shit. What? We should have been rich, man. We should have been rich because my dad was real invented. My dad invented aromatherapy. That ain't funny. No, we use different scents to calm your nerves and stuff. My dad invented that. Every year we take a vacation from New Orleans to Florida to visit my uncle in a station wagon with vinyl seats and no air conditioning in the middle of August. And me and my brother would be in the back seat arguing and fighting and arguing. And my dad would fart in the car and roll up the windows. And that would calm your ass down real fast. Yeah, especially if you had chili at the Stuckies. Oh. Mom turned around smiling, wearing that Vietnam gas mask. I told you! We could have pulled over! <laughs> to this day, I go into like Pier 1. I'm like, I'm looking for a candle. Any particular scent? Yeah, how about a mustard gas in a Plymouth? <laughs> trying to reminisce. That's... <laughs> Don't laugh. They have the shit. <laughs> right next to the vomit in a dorm room. That's, that's an LSU candle. It's purple, y'all. That... <laughs> Man, I'm trying to get rich. I'm trying to get rich here at South Street. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Prostitution! Yeah, I'd be the only one downtown giving out refunds and shit. Yeah! Here's your three dollars back. Thought the shit would be better too. I'm sorry. Now I'm trying to win the Powerball. Anybody else? I'm the only one buying tickets. Powerball people! Yeah. Shit, I'm trying to win like a hundred million though. I, I won't even go until it gets up. I went it was like 15 million. I'm like, that's only seven after taxes. Fuck that. <laughs> what am I doing with that? I'm trying to win a hundred million because I got shit I want to do. First thing I do, I pay off all my bills. I pay off all my credit cards. I would. I call up Visa. I'd be like, yeah, Visa's T-Ray. Uh, look at my account. Pull it up. What's the balance? What's the balance? It's paid off! <laughs> and say, T, where are your accounts paid off? You can stop calling. And I say, guess what, Mr. Visa? Remember about a month ago? I knew the shit was late. <laughs> you can stop your ass from calling four times a day. Keep the phone handy. The second thing I do, I uh, quit my day job, but I think I keep my day job. You keep your day job? I keep my day job too, I guess. Not because I like my day job, I work at a bird game. That ain't funny. I just like to see how much stuff I could fuck up before they let me go. <laughs> T didn't wear his uniform today. T scratched his ass before he made a whopper. Shit like that. Uh, the third thing I do, I build a big giant addition on my house. I let my parents move 
move in. Y'all would do that right up top? Yeah. <laughs> would you do that? I do that because, you know, I figure they raised me. I am a good son, right? That's my only reason. All right, two reasons. So I can say, long as you live under my roof. <laughs> Where you going? Where you going? Quiet practice on a Wednesday. <laughs> no, no, come straight home. Don't lie to God with your friends. I was in your car. We need to talk. I found these cigarettes. Yeah, don't tell me you're holding for a friend. Been there. I know you're 75. I know you're 75. It's that attitude that's gonna land you in a substandard nursing home. <laughs> Lord, I was uh, in New Orleans. At, well, it was not for Katrina, but my house got water during Katrina, and uh, I'm totally sick of the Katrina shit. Because I think back to simpler times before Katrina, they had cool shit in the news. Remember, they had uh, Michael Jackson was in the news. He had just gotten off. <laughs> And then they had a trial because of it. <laughs> then the motherfucker got off again. Remember that? I'd like to see Michael Jackson in prison. That'd be the survivor I want to see, right? Michael Jackson in prison. Just look like him eating in the cafeteria. Just like, um, excuse me. Excuse me. Huh? <laughs> you need that cornbread? Mike had to change his songs up and shit, like he'd be in his cell at night. It's after midnight. Someone out there sneaking in my cell. <laughs> when I hear the door slam, it realizes the unfamiliar smell. <laughs> but I try to scream, but something's in my mouth before I make it. A nice little song about cornbread. You made a prison dick sucking joke, and I, I appreciate that. It got me hot. Oh, you like the girl I tried to hit on in the clubs and shit when I used to go out to clubs. And yeah, really, yeah, white. That's or black. Doesn't matter. I was. I try to use those cheesy pickup lines. You guys know what I'm talking about when it goes to hey, babe, hey, how you doing? I noticed you from across the stage, and did it hurt? When you fell from heaven? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> People are not like, look at him, I hope he fucking bombs out, fuck him. <laughs> Sucks, pick up lines suck, man. You know what's cool is that girls have pick up lines too, guys. You know that? Girls have the easiest, best pick up lines. They'll walk in the club, see the guy they like, are interested in, and sit down, and have a few drinks, and they, hmm. Wait around till they're ready to leave, and then walk over, tap on the shoulder, and go, "Hey, excuse me, let's go." <laughs> That's it. It's the whole fucking line. Let's go. Right? It works like 99% of the times, right? The guy's like, "Yeah, I'm getting laid. Woohoo! Let's go. Let's go." Works every time, unless you're like seven feet tall and have long fur all over your whole body. Yeah, weigh like 700 pounds. Then you gotta wait like a little later. <laughs> right? Three o'clock in the morning. Let's go. Alright! I'm fucking a Wookiee! Three camera! That's why I wish, man. I wish I was a female. The females in the club, man, you guys have all the power in the club and there's like right? No pressure to look good or anything, right? Damn, they'll get quiet fast. <laughs> you know, that's when the girl looks at me and goes, oh, oh my god, I can't believe you said that. We spent all this time like I did my hair, I did my makeup, I put on 27 outfits for you men just to make this not look good for you men because you men it's men, man. Look at us, we're fucking shallow. Right? I mean, if you put enough of us in the woods around a campfire, we would light our own farts for entertainment. Right? <laughs> I mean, a woman could be that tall, furry woman where she can have like big pointy ass ears.
ears and fangs like ah, and one big eye right in the middle of my forehead. And she can go get implants and walk down the street. And a guy will tap his friend on the shoulder and go, oh, hey man. Hey, look, uh, check out the titties on the Cyclops. It's hot. And that same girl go get a job at Hooters, right? She'll be pouring beer and a guy at the table across will go, look at the ass on a furry chick. Hot. Is this a hair in my wings? What? It's hard dating. You on a date? Are you, you guys dating? Are you dating a freak? Man, that's worse. My bad. Ain't I, ain't I dating a freak? I'm married to a freak. She, I'm married to a freak! Woohoo! Sounds like a Cinemax movie. Uh, now, I dated this freak, right? And she was, um. She was really into rap and hip hop, which is cool with me. I like rap and hip hop. I'm just not obsessed with the shit, right? She was all, I love Missy Elliott, don't you love Missy Elliott? Get Missy Elliott great. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Get your naked. <laughs> she was obsessed though. She would yell out the song lyrics just at random times. We were right in the middle of shit in the bedroom. Things were getting hot and heavy, and she screams out right in the middle, now go downtown and eat it like a vulture. <laughs> And they say romance is dead, right? <laughs> then I think back on the whole incident and I kind of felt like a vulture, right? Because I was circling above it. <laughs> Honestly. And it smelled like some man died. It's all about being a fresh breath and cornbread. <laughs> Shit, I've been married now. I've been married a long time. And uh, I, I wouldn't say that the sex slows down after you got married. I would say if you looked up my ride on Carfax, it would say slightly used. That's all. <laughs> Only driven on weekends, a little mileage. Still has that new ball smell. That's... <laughs> Up your sex life with you know anything you have in the house. Chris go and mention any fucking thing you have in the house. <laughs> my wife comes home, she's like, look, I got this today, it's gonna spice up my sex life. You gotta love it here. Check this out, it's only $40, it's a book. <laughs> no, it's a fucking book, people. Like you have to read. I'm not talking like a pop-up or a hustler. No, it's a real book. <laughs> 400 pages. It's like some stupid ass title like Women are from Mars, Men Have a Penis, some shit like that. <laughs> 400 pages to tell you one thing. Men and women view the world differently. <laughs> no shit. Do we know that? Even in like the simplest terms, we know that. Like men like the toilet seat up. Women like the toilet seat dry. <laughs> I think the problem is the women are uh, inconsistent. You agree with me guys? Up top. Woo! Yeah, not consistent at all. I'll give you an example. Me and my wife are in the bedroom. Things are getting hot and heavy. She's not a Miss Elliott fan. Cool. Right in the middle, she's like, oh yeah, baby, grab my nipple, grab my nipple, grab it, grab it. Oh yeah, right there, that's it, right there. I love you, yeah. I'm like, I didn't need a book for that shit, did I? <laughs> Hell no. Three weeks later, we're in the bedroom. I'm like, I know what she likes, I know what she likes, I know what she likes. I Google the nipple. Ah! Because you like it? <laughs> Not today, they're sensitive. <laughs> you get that? The sensitive thing? You yeah, she's like, right now! Oh. <laughs> Sex. I'm like, shit, my balls are sensitive all the time. <laughs> I'll let you tug on them three times a year if it makes you fucking happy. That's all I'm gonna... 
Yeah, we're still fighting over that equality thing, right? The men and women equal rights? No? I think you women won that, right? <laughs> you think they won? Hell yeah, they won. Let me tell you, I'll give you an example. A woman can go sell an egg at a clinic, right? A fertile egg, you go to the clinic, you get a woman gets like six to eight thousand dollars for an egg, am I right? A man can sell his sperm, you know what you mean? You go to the clinic and into a cup, there's like four million of them. You can get 25 bucks. <laughs> and a fucking juice box. <laughs> you can't question them, they give you attitude. <laughs> no, you can't keep the magazine. <laughs> Lucky you're getting gas money. <laughs> You'd be at home watching people if you killed them for free. <laughs> I was going to argue, but she had a point. <laughs> My second example is um, diamonds are a girl's best friend, right? What's a man's best friend? A fucking dog. <laughs> Who voted for that? Wait, did you vote for that? Do you even remember it happened? It happened during the Super Bowl. I know it did. Fuck y'all. <laughs> All the women in the kitchen pretending to get chips and shit. Yeah, we'll vote. <laughs> you know they passed better shit, right? You know, they were like, hmm, in case of you're in a football game, that's not a real friend. <laughs> Stripper in a Ferrari, she won't be there during the hard times. <laughs> Blow job at noon, that's more of an imaginary friend. <laughs> we'll go with the dog. We'll take the dog. <laughs> my wife thinks the dog is my best friend, I think, because she would throw him out of the bedroom before we have sex. She would say, get him out of the room. I'm like, why? Because he likes to watch. <laughs> He's gross. <laughs> I'm like, he doesn't like to watch anything. Unless there's like food involved, he's not interested, okay? I mean, he's in there, okay? And he may be looking up, but he sees wieners and tacos. He thinks he's getting table scraps, that's all. <laughs> He's watching like... <laughs> Someone's gonna fall off. <laughs> Man, I hate to fly. Everybody here fly recently? Can't fly now, you can't bring a liquid on a plane. If you have to pee, they make you pee before you get on a plane. They won't let you... Scary. I uh, you say to fly, especially my whole work. You spoke about on this airline called Frontier Airlines. You ever heard of that? Yeah, big ass. It's like a bus with wings, people. Shitty ass air. Big white plane on the side of the plane. And they have a grizzly bear. Yeah, the other one had a moose. It's all animals that are indicative of flight, I guess. You know. <laughs> None says take me to the sky like a fucking moose. That's. <laughs> Get on the plane, you don't have to worry about anybody breaching the cockpit door because they ain't have a cockpit door. <laughs> Hell no, they had a partition like a limo. It's like, <laughs> the captain has turned off the no smoking sign. <laughs> it's cool now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No, the captain wasn't the scariest part of the flight, but the, the scariest part was the stewardess. You can't call the stewardess anymore, right? What? All right, the gay dude serving drinks was the scariest part of the flight. <laughs> he comes out, he's all alone. Oh, Mr. Ray, oh my God, it's a great day at Frontier Airlines. Trip is not even have so much fun today. You're in row 13. That's your safety row. It's so exciting. Come with me, come with me. I have to ask you a few questions. First of all, do you speak English? I need to know if you speak English. It's very important. Do you speak English? I'm like, bitch, you're talking to me in English. <laughs> Okay, second, I need to know, can you lift 50 pounds? I need to know if you can lift 50 pounds because the emergency door you're sitting next to weighs 50 pounds. In the event of an unlikely emergency, you'd have to lift off the door and throw it off and the ring pops out. You help everybody off the plane. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? I got all wrapped up in this shit. I'm like, hell yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Especially with all the protein in this pack of peanuts you gave me. So I sit there, man. I sit because I'm waiting, right? I'm waiting. I'm all anxious. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Don't they let the fucking wing fall off. I'm waiting! Because I know that with all the prior training,
training and experience that they gave me on the flight that in the unlikely event happens and I have to go heave off the 50 pound door and the little fucking rampy ramp thing pops out. I'm the first one off the fucking plane. <laughs> Hell yeah, I didn't ask for a flight and a job, bitch. Just get me to point B, that's all. <laughs> I mean, I'll stick around and help out, okay? I'll be floating down there like... <laughs> It's a ramp! Jump, asshole! <laughs> you have a slide at your playground? Get the fuck down! It's a long swim. Throw those nuts down. Shit, they tell you useless shit on every flight you take. They tell you this. In the event of a water landing, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device. <laughs> I'm like, we are flying from Denver, Colorado to Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> and they've got a water landing. We are fucking lost. <laughs> what, are we going to land in somebody's pool? <laughs> they tell you some shit you can use. Like, in the event we crash this plane into the desert and you live. <laughs> the guy next to you can be used as lunch. <laughs> And that blue shit in the toilet is liquid LSD. Drink it up! <laughs> Keeps the buzzers off. Man, I'm about to get out of here. Before I do, I'm going to let you know I do have uh, these two CDs available that you really want. This one is called, uh, this really sucks, but it's only five bucks. <laughs> so it's five. This is an older CD. It's like three years old, so you hear some old Siegfried and Roy jokes. Remember Roy Orr got pulled off stage by a tiger? By his fucking neck in the middle of the show? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> you hear jokes that go like, yeah, that's the trouble with having a gay animal trainer is you can't tell when the pussy goes bad. That's... <laughs> Shut up. It's my classic collection right there. This one here is about three months off. It's called T-Ray Love is for Suckers. Ten dollars, five dollars, because it's Saturday night and you're such a great crowd, I give them both to you for fifteen. <laughs> That's a fucking deal in Mississippi. Don't laugh. They're like, whoop. <laughs> I, I, I am a parent, man. I have kids. Anybody else here have kids? One kid? I have kids. My daughter started kindergarten, and I don't, I don't really get kindergarten, because kindergarten is the easiest classwork that you're ever going to have, right? Even if you go to college in Mississippi. Kindergarten. <laughs> Right? Right in the middle of it, you get a nap. What? I'm like, save that shit for high school when you really need it. <laughs> Pass your friend in the hall, be like, damn, that geometry test was a bitch. You going on to English? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to take a fucking nap. <laughs> Got three left. <laughs> kids today don't have become a problem. I find that the kids have gone wild. You see girls going wild? Like your boy's talking about, the kids have gone wild in the Walmart, cursing out their moms and shit. You know what it is? The timeout's not working, people. Right? You agree with me on that? Yeah. The whole reward reprimand system is out of whack. So I devised a new system at my house. My uh, 13 year old comes running downstairs on a Friday during school. She's like, Ted, guess what? I woke up and there was $5 under my pillow. I said, I know, I put it there. She's like, well, I said, because you have a test today. It's Friday. She's going, that's right. I have an English test and I have a math test. I said, well, I'm your dad and I love you and I have a feeling that you're going to do really well on all your tests. Oh, you're going to lose a tooth. 